Each Sunday, we shine the spotlight on the nation's brightest entrepreneurs across the country. Tonight's guest is award-winning author Nakisha Lise Williams. We talk about her new novel titled Beyond Bourbon Street, a fitting tribute as we approach the 15th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. <coughs> Nakisha Lise Williams, thank you so much for joining us for Entrepreneur Sunday. Thank you for having me. Now, we know becoming an entrepreneur is a tough journey for many, and you've been a journalist for several years. What led you down the path to becoming an author? Oh, gosh. It was really because I loved writing, but journalism is really rigid, and so it doesn't allow you to do uh, the kind of writing that I like, which is, more, which is more creative in nature, which is usually fiction. You always have to tell the truth in journalism. So it was, journalism was the job, but then writing fiction was the outlet. And so, you know, you just finished your fifth novel, and many people say they want to write a book but don't know where to start. What has your experience been like with you starting out? It's been hard, um, you, especially working in news, because I wrote all of my books while I was still working the job. Um, I had to make the time. I had to put in the hours to to write and to do something that I said I loved if I knew I wanted to eventually step away from the business which I've done and do it full time and so you know anything worth having is worth working for and worth working for hard and so that's what I had to do it's been difficult but I don't regret it what's what's some of the most difficult things that you've encountered while becoming an author um, I guess the most difficult thing is doing it as an independent author. So there are like two traditional ways of becoming an author. Either you find an agent and get a major publishing deal with a publishing house, or you go the indie route. And so for me, I tried the traditional route, and though I got really close a few times with some publishing companies, I eventually had to do it on my own, which means I started my own publishing company to publish not only my work, but now I'm publishing other people as well. So that was one of the biggest hurdles, and because there's a stigma kind of against uh, independent authors, authors and self-published authors, I'm constantly overcoming that, trying to prove that, you know, my work, even though I'm investing in everything myself, is still as good as anything else that you would find from a, from a traditional publishing company. And we know writing a book is also time consuming. It takes a lot of focus. How, you know, how do you find that healthy balance between writing novels and your family? Oh, gosh. Um, I don't think that I did. Because especially when my my last few years of news, I was writing profusely. And so it was if I wasn't at work, I was writing. And if I wasn't writing, I was at work. But my son, who was five, he was two or three then, still was a demand on my time. And so I had to step away. And he even understood, Mommy, you're always working. Mommy, you're always writing. Mommy, you're always doing something. So I try to make specific and intentional times that when I do step away, I shut everything down and I focus on him or my family. But it's definitely a difficult balancing act to, uh, to juggle for sure. And of course, you've been working hard doing a one woman show, also <laughs> writing articles for different web magazines. You do a lot. <laughs> but tell us about your, yes, tell us about your newest novel, Beyond Bourbon Street, and the upcoming virtual book release. All right. So, the newest novel, as you said, is Beyond Bourbon Street. It's set in the Lower Ninth Ward of New Orleans, Louisiana, 15 years after Hurricane Katrina. And it really just kind of looks at the recovery that has not happened in that area of the city, which if you remember was one of the most devastated areas during the storm in 2005. And so I wanted to kind of interrogate what that what life looks like in that area now through fiction and then also show that they you know even though it hasn't completely recovered even though there is still a lot of decay that you can see there's still life that is happening there and that I think that should be the focus what's your message to other black women and other black people who are looking to break into that industry and say you know what I can write a book what would you say to them the first thing to do is to sit down and write. That's the that's the only way that you're going to get it done. So if you want to write a book, sit down and write a book. Build a habit, build a discipline, whether it's 30 minutes a day, an hour a day. Just get that muscle memory going so that when you really don't want to, you're compelled to do so by the story that you're telling and that you're putting out there. So the first step is always to just sit down and to do it. And lastly, where can people get your books? That's the most important thing. <laughs> Get my books everywhere books are sold. BarnesandNoble.com, Amazon, iBooks, Kindle. You can buy directly from my web website, newrights.com. But anywhere where you go get your books, whether it's your local indie, a black-owned bookstore, online, they will have them or they can order them for you for sure. 
All right, Nikisha Elise Williams, thank you so much for joining us today. Can't wait to get my hands on your other books because I know I at least own two already. <laughs> thank you so much, Brittany. Yes, wishing you the best with your career.